Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, the best place to be wherever you are on your wealth journey right now. Today I want to discuss the new Electrical Inspection Condition Report, or EICR, that all landlords need to provide to their tenants by April 2021. Now hopefully if you're a landlord already and you're watching this, you will already have put the wheels in motion to get your EICR done before the 1st of April. Otherwise I do suggest you getting a wriggle on because we are getting quite close to it and we do need to have this in place by the 1st of April deadline. It's coming in and it's compulsory for all landlords. So today I want to talk about most of the common questions that come up when talking about the EICR. So for example, what exactly is the EICR? What sort of things does it cover? How long does it last? And what to do if yours isn't satisfactory. Also, is there a time limit for works to be done and what kind of properties does it cover? I'm also going to show you a couple of examples of an EICR and also talk about what our obligations are as landlords. So let's get started then. What exactly is an EICR and where does it come from? So an EICR is an Electrical Inspection Condition Report. It actually came into force from the 1st of June 2020, so last year actually, and that was for all new tenancies, but it doesn't come in for existing tenancies until the 1st of April this year, 2021. It is regulation and it's overseen by the Department of Housing, Communities and Local Government. And much like our gas safety check that we have to do every year, this is basically the government coming in and trying to help tenants and make sure that they crack down on slum landlords who might be putting their tenants at risk. Now I quite often say the last thing you want to do when you have a good tenant is to fry them. So I think this is actually a really good piece of legislation and I'm quite glad that it's coming in really. Because not only will your tenant be happy, but you will also have peace of mind that everything in your property is up to date and no one's going to get hurt. The EICR is designed to bring your property up to date with the 18th edition of the wiring regulations, which came out in 2019. What kind of properties does it cover? Well, the EICR needs to be carried out on all what I call baby buy to let properties. So any kind of standard rental. Plus, if you have a small HMO, so that's a house of multiple occupancy, with between two and four tenants, all not part of a family, they're all separate individuals living there, then you will also need an EICR for that as well. If you have a larger HMO with five or more unrelated tenants in it, then you would need a license for that. And as such, your electrical checks form part of the conditions for your license. So providing you have a license on your HMO, you should be covered for this already. But if you're in any doubt whatsoever, I would say definitely check with your local council just to make sure. So what does an EICR cover then? Well, it covers all the fixed electrical items in your property. So it'd be things like light switches, light fittings, plug sockets, the wiring, the fuse box, plus anything that's permanently there. So for example, if you've got an electric shower installed, it would cover that and extractor fans as well would be covered too. Now, interestingly, it does not cover its small individual items. So things like kettles, toasters, and so on. Those are a separate electrical test called a PAT test, which is portable appliance testing. And the only time you need a PAT test as, as a landlord is if you have supplied those things to your tenant. But if your tenant has supplied them themselves, then they don't need a PAT test on that. And PAT testing for the kettles and toasters and so on, that is not a legal requirement for landlords in the UK at the moment. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it is best practice if you are providing tenants with things like that, then you might want to consider doing so. And if you've got a HMO, then you will be doing that anyway. But for now, your EICR covers all the fixed electrical things that you can't remove from the property. Now, hopefully your EICR will be okay, but if it's not, if it comes back unsatisfactory, then you have 28 days to remedy the situation and fix anything that needs fixing. I would say on this as well, please don't be surprised if work needs to be done. It's amazing how quickly wiring can go out of date. For myself, the main issue that I found in a lot of my properties, which are all sort of 80s, 90s type properties, the main issue there has been fuse boxes, or I think they're now called consumer units. So those have all needed replacing in a lot of my properties. That has been one of the key things that I've had to have done. And sometimes things like that can be quite costly to replace. Now we've had lots of EICRs done so far, and only one of them so far has not needed any work doing whatsoever. All of the others have needed something to be fixed, and that has cost us anywhere between 150 and 600 pounds. So you do need to make sure that you have got a pot of money set aside for this. 
Your EICR certificate will last you for five years as well. So it's important that although obviously you're doing the work now, you also need a pot of money set aside for five years time when you're probably going to have to do this all over again and probably have things come up again that need fixing. So just remember to plan for that kind of stuff coming up in the future. So what does an EICR certificate look like? Well, I've got a couple here that I can show you. So I'll pop onto the computer here. Now, um, I've obviously used somebody who is NEC EIC registered, which is definitely something I would recommend when you're finding an electrician. And this is their form here. This is their actual certificate. And this is the one that was absolutely fine, had no problem with this property. We can see here that in section three, it says that the condition of the electrics is satisfactory. And part five then tells me when I should next have an EICR, which is very important that you know that. So it says five years, and that's really important. It's a good idea to make a note of that on any spreadsheets you have so that you can remember, because five years actually is quite a long time. And with your gas safety, obviously that's once a year, it's quite easy to remember it. But you know, unless you've got this written down somewhere, you're probably going to forget after five years. And it's probably best not to rely on your letting agent to help you. So I would always have that written down somewhere if you can. So this is the one obviously that was fine. Then the other one that I have is the one that was unsatisfactory. So we can see here in section three, it says unsatisfactory with a star. And then if we go down to section five, rather than checking it in five years time, it says that I need to check it after the repairs. If I scroll down to section six on this particular report, it then gives me the details of all the things that needed remedial work. And if I go down even further to section 10, it tells me all the different things that they've actually tested in the property. So you can see that this is pretty comprehensive. Hopefully you can see this is a little bit small, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. So pretty comprehensive reports, as you can see. So what are our responsibilities as landlords then when it comes to getting our EICR? Well, according to the .gov website, and I'll put that website in the description underneath this video, according to the .gov website, it says that as landlords, we must, so landlords of privately rented accommodation must, number one, ensure that national standards for electrical safety are met. And it says these are set out in the 18th edition of the wiring regulations, which were published as British Standard 7671. So that's where we are. That's what our properties are going to be brought up to the wiring regulations um, 18th edition. Number two is ensure that the electrical installations in their rented properties are inspected and tested by a qualified and competent person at least every five years. So we know that it's a five year thing. We need to make sure that our electrician is qualified and competent. So they're keeping up to date with all their electrical qualifications as well. Number three, we need to obtain a report from the person conducting the inspection and test, which gives the results and sets a date for the next inspection and test. So that's where on my certificate, I've got there written five years time. So that'll be five years from the date that it was actually uh, issued. We also have obligations to our tenants with regards to the EICR. So for example, it says here as number four, supply a copy of this report to the existing tenant within 28 days of the inspection and test. So we have to give our tenant a copy of the report if they're already in situ. Number five, supply a copy of this report to a new tenant before they occupy the premises. So obviously if you've got a vacant property and you've got tenants coming to look at the property before they move in, you must give them a copy of this EICR. And number six is to supply a copy of this report to any prospective tenant within 28 days of receiving a request for the report. So if you've got people looking to rent your property and they've said maybe to you as the landlord or maybe they've said to the letting agent, does this property have an EICR report? Then obviously you would need to supply that to them within 28 days. Number seven, we must also supply the local authority with a copy of this report within seven days of receiving a request for a copy. Now, I've been thinking about this and I've been thinking why would the local council request a copy of your EICR because they're not going to want everybody's you know that that's not what they're about the council aren't interested in that kind of thing they would probably only want your EICR report if 
you have been daubed into them effectively. If someone has said to the council, you are a slum landlord, and they've obviously clocked that and written to you about it and said, okay, landlord, prove to me that you're not a slum landlord by sending me your EICR report. That's one scenario. Another scenario might be if you have a council tenant in your property, then obviously the council would then be responsible for that tenant and they would need a copy of the EICR report then, just like they would need a copy of your gas safety certificate before the tenant moved in as well. So those are two scenarios I can think of as to why the council would want a copy of your EICR. If anyone can think of any other ones, drop me a comment underneath this video. Number eight, we also have to retain a copy of the report to give to the inspector and tester who will undertake the next inspection and test. So make sure that you've got a copy of this to hand. So, I mean, as I said to you before, I normally keep all of my documents on a Google Drive. I can just download them then and send them to whoever needs to see them uh, at the relevant time. So I'm gonna keep all of those and in five years time when my checks become due, I can send everything off to the next person that's going to test it. Number nine, it says where the report shows that remedial or further investigation investigative work is necessary, complete this work within 28 days or any shorter period if specified as necessary in the report. So we have 28 days effectively from the initial report when it's unsatisfactory that we can then go and do the work that needs to be done. And just as an aside actually, somebody did ask and the government have put this on their website as well, what happens if the tenant won't let us in or we can't actually get access to do the work? The government have said, well, if you've got all the records to show, that as a landlord you've been trying to get in and you've been trying to contact the tenant then that's okay you know you're still within your remit as a professional landlord so, you know you've been trying your best to try and get into that property to get the things that you need to do done and it's not exactly your fault if they can't let you in obviously you do need to keep trying and you do need to keep all of your records in that process and last one number 10 it says we must also supply written confirmation of the completion of the remedial works from the electrician to the tenant and i guess and or the local authority within 28 days of completion of the works so obviously your tenant would need to make sure and know that everything was up to date and everything was satisfactory with the new report and the council would probably need to know that for the reasons listed above. So I do hope that's all been helpful for you guys and it has given you a little bit more clarity on what exactly the EICR is and what your responsibilities are as a landlord. Do give me a thumbs up underneath this video if you have found it helpful and I really hope it all goes well for you and your EICR checks and that you don't need to do too much work or spend too much money to get it all sorted out. Do have a watch guys of these two videos coming up next because they will hopefully help with your wealth journey. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet as well and thanks ever so much for watching this week guys. Do stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.